Welcome to A Perfect Place to Start. On this channel we do home decor and DIY projects and for today's video I have some really fun patriotic DIYs in a shabby farmhouse look. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching, stick around and I hope that you like and subscribe. So for our first project today we're going to be creating patriotic blocks. These actually came from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to be using one of the giant hearts and two stars. So I'm going to start by paint painting with my folk art chalk paint in red and I'll list all the colors down in my description box. Then I'm going to take one star and I'm going to paint that with some white folk art chalk paint. And then I'm going to take my blue star and I'm going to paint that with some blue folk art chalk paint. Once I get those covered in my paint, then I'm going to take my chippy brush and I'm going to use white and I have um, got most of the paint out of there. These brushes do such a great job for distressing. You can pick them up on Amazon. I will link those down in my description box as well. I'm going to cover the red heart and the blue heart with white and then I used antique wax to cover the white star and then I just took the rope that these came like tied on with and I tied them all together and here they are styled in some decor. For this project we're going to make a flag fence post and I created these fence post pieces in another project. I'll list that up here in the cards and down in my description box if you want to see how I made these. I get the fence post from Home Depot and um, all I'm going to do is hot glue these three pieces together and then once I have those together it makes this cute little fence post. You can also use wood glue here if you would like to do that. Then I take some ribbon that I had in my stash. I believe this all came from uh, the Dollar Tree. In the video for some reason it looks backwards but I promise you when we get to the pictures it's the right side of the flag. So I just hot glued my pieces of ribbon onto the front of my fence post and then once I got those glued on I took some buttons and I'm using cream buttons here but you could use any buttons you wanted. Start would be really cute star buttons if you had some. Then I made a shabby bow just using some fabric I had on hand. This fabric also came from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a button right into the middle of my shabby bow. And here it is, styled in some decor. Today's video is part of a 4th of July DIY collab that was put together by my friend Dee from Designers Loft. Down in my description box there will be a playlist and the playlist will feature videos from Designers Loft, Crafting Cousins, Crafty Weenie, Can Sarah DIY It, and Luxury Living with Erin as well as myself. So when you're done watching this video, make sure you go down to the description box and check out the playlist so that you do not miss any of the amazing 4th of July DIYs that will be there today. For the next project, we'll be creating a 4th of July wood block. This is super easy. I picked up this little wood sign from Dollar General for a dollar. And then these were little like scrapbooking cards that were like on a piece of scrapbook paper. I'm not sure where I got them from, but I'm sure any you could get them at Hobby Lobby. Um, all I did was glue it into the front of this little wood block. Made a shabby bow using some ribbon from the Dollar Tree and some twine. I'm going to glue that to the corner of my sign add a button in the middle for a little extra touch and then this project is complete and here it is styled in some decor. So for this project we're going to make a rag flag and this is a super easy project to make. You're going to start out with a hoop. Any hoop will do. This is something I had in my stash but if you have an embroidery hoop that'll work fine. This fabric was all just fabric I also had in my stash and was left over from a different rag wreath I had made before. I'll list that Easter wreath up here if you want to check it out. But all you're going to do is cut it into strips and it really doesn't matter the length. These are about an inch or so. They're not all uniform 
either and so that's okay too. But all you're going to do is cut them into their strips and then you're going to tie them onto your hoop. I started out with the blue which is this blue plaid. This fabric was from the Dollar Tree and you're just going to loop it over and tie it. Now the point um, to hold these together is to make sure that they're super tight. You want to have several you know, you want it to be very tight on the hoop. So once I get my blue on there, at this point I only have the plaid on, but I do go back later in the reef after I'm about done and add my solid blue fabric in between the plaid. At first I wasn't sure I was going to use it, but then I decided that I liked it better having both the plaid and the solid blue. Next you're just going to take the red fabric and the white fabric and you're going to do the exact same thing, intertwining them. Once you get all your uh, rag pieces on there, if you feel like some of them are longer than other ones, you can go ahead and trim them then. And then here it is, styled in some decor. Hi friends, are you enjoying today's video? I hope so. If you haven't hit that like button yet, consider hitting it now. It helps my channel grow and it helps my video be seen by other people. For this project, we're gonna make over some basket filler. I picked up this like basket filler at Hobby Lobby this season. Um, it's in the 75% off clearance area, so I paid like $3. I just picked out all of the like uh, wicker balls and I'm going to be painting them in red, white, and blue. So if you don't have these wicker balls, you could also use styrofoam and cover them with fabric. That would be super cute as well. <clears throat> but all I did was um, separate them. I made the darker ones white because I thought the paint would show up better and it did. I really liked how the white ones turned out. But I just intertwined them red, white, and blue and then I separated them and tried to make them equal parts red, white, and blue. And then that's all there is to this. Here it is styled in a basket and I think it's super cute. So for this project we're going to make a wooden house with a heart. This is super easy. These I had several of these little houses from a Hobby Lobby clearance at Christmas time. I'm just going to take some scrapbook paper, I cut it out to the size of the house, and then I'm using some Mod Podge to attach the paper to my house. Once I get the paper attached, I'm just going to take some twine and I'm going to wrap it around the house. But before I do that, I'm going to paint my heart white. So I start out painting. This heart came from Goodwill for 99 cents. Any heart will do here. You can pick one up at the Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. I did go ahead and cover my heart after the white paint with my chippy brush using some red paint. And I just dry brushed that over it. So then I'm going to add my twine. I hot glued a piece into the back of the house. Then I'm wrapping it around and then I'm going to secure it in the back again with some more hot glue. Then I'm going to take my heart, which I think turned out so cute. You don't always have to dry brush with white. I think sometimes we do that, you know, we paint with the color and dry brush with white, but you don't have to do that. In this case, I dry brush with red and I think it turned out adorable. Once I attach that to my house, then here it is, styled in some decor. Here's a final look at all the projects today. They gave me a very rustic country feel and I love that kind of decor. So I hope that you loved the projects. Let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite and if you're going to recreate any of the projects I created today. And don't forget to go down into the description box, click that playlist so you can check out all the amazing DIYs from the creators in the playlist today. If you loved today's video, here are some other videos up in the top that you might be interested in watching as well. And as always, wherever you are in your journey is a perfect place to start, and I will see you in my next video.